What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com coming to you from the nosebleed section at Barnhill Arena. I got the uh, stuff set up for the gym backs here. As you can see, we're way up high. I was looking for a place to do this post-national signing day walk and talk. This place works as good as any. So Arkansas wrapping up the signing class, ended up with 20 high school recruits, three graduate transfers, probably not over. You know, there's still some guys out there. Ebony Jackson is one in the running back uh, who's going to probably sign later. You know, Xavier Kelly's another guy to watch. Sam Pittman mentioned they would like to see him go after a tight end. So, you know, there was actually a lot of things that came out of that. Um, you know, they're only going to be able to sign 25, so they're actually not going to be able to count any players back to last year's class. So it will be a hard 25, so that basically just leaves two spots. So, you know, Zevany, uh, Zavion, uh, <laughs> Xavier Kelly's out there. Uh, he mentioned wanting to get a tight end possibly, Ebony Jackson. So something's got to give in that regard if they can only bring in two more. Another interesting thing, uh, start of spring football is going to be March 16th, and that should put the red-white game on the 25th of April. So. That's, uh, that's a lot later than what we're used to with Chad Morris, and we knew it would be a little bit later. Pittman uh, had mentioned that in an earlier interview I had with him. So um, going to be a lot later spring ball, and probably a good thing, allow them to get bigger, because that's going to be a big focus, spend a little bit more time in the weight room than they normally would. I mean, with Morris, they usually would have started at the end of February. So a lot later, still to be determined if they're going to allow it to have uh, the, the red-white game in Little Rock on the 25th of April. Um, if not, it'll be in Fayetteville, but that's got to get cleared through the NCAA. So, you know, just looking at this, obviously, first of all, some big commitments right out of the gate with uh, Marcus Henderson, Jalen St. John, and Malik Hornsby. So let's talk about those guys at first. We got to start with the quarterback, obviously. Malik Hornsby, a big 6'3", 175 pounder, uh, who's the number 98 rated overall prospect in the country, a guy that can really throw it, a 10, 700 meter guy, can really run. Um, you know, and, and a guy that's probably going to have to add a little bit of weight, probably goes about a buck 80. So, I mean, that's, that's just natural. But what I like about him, and I always go, kind of go back to Nick Marshall in terms of when we're talking about a dual threat quarterback, because basically almost all the quarterbacks have to run. Like 90% of the cases, you've got to have a quarterback that can run, that can be a willing and effective runner. But a guy that really has jets, that can really get it and really scare a defense to where, you know, even if he's not that great a passer, he becomes a great passer because they're so scared of what he might do with his legs. So that's kind of what I think of when I think a real dual threat quarterback. Everything's, everything's dual threat, right, with quarterbacks. You don't ever hear like running quarterback. You know, it's either a passing quarterback or a dual threat quarterback. What about a running quarterback, period? You know, a guy that just does that way better. I always thought that was kind of interesting. You're either dual threat or passing. But with Malik, I think he can throw it, but really intrigued with the legs, the pure speed that he can bring to the table. And, um, you know, they didn't get a wide receiver in the class. That was obviously a little disappointing, but what they have on board right now, I mean, it's a pretty solid group that Justin Stepp brought in last year, but they just weren't able to, to overcome and, and get Savion Williams. So um, offensive line, you know, we got to talk about, when we talk about Marcus Henderson and Jalen St. John, we also have to talk about Ray Curry because he's a part of this too, even though he signed early. But Ray Curry Jr. and Marcus Henderson had scholarship offers from 13 of the 14 SEC schools. Vanderbilt didn't offer Marcus Henderson for some reason and Florida didn't offer a Ray Curry Jr. for some reason. So, I mean, that in and of itself is pretty impressive pretty impressive and it's amazing how the offensive line recruiting just picks up right when those guys get here so a couple of nice additions and with uh with with Jalen St. John I mean he had half of the SEC I think he had seven SEC offers not to mention a ton of other big time power five offers so those three guys right there Pittman normally is going to want to sign four in each class but those three right there really nice additions really really nice and guys that you know could possibly, like Ray Curry Jr., uh, you know, strength-wise is probably ahead, as Sam Pittman was saying today, probably ahead of where most high school players are. So you could definitely see him coming in and contributing. Marcus Henderson is a guy that went from about 335 to about 290. So that's like 45 pounds uh, that he's dropped of good, uh, excuse me, of bad weight. So that's, that's definitely good. You know, with the graduate transfers, uh, Arkansas last night picking up Levi Draper, uh, the Oklahoma linebacker who I mean, he was like a top 100 prospect coming out of high school. He hasn't played a whole lot at OU. But again, as I've said, if you're an average to 
above average or whatever player and you've proven it on the power five level, then come on down to Arkansas because they could use you. And linebacker is a position that they have always had issues with for, I mean, it's been like, I mean, how long is it? It's been so since like Otha Peters and Alan Turner were freshmen and, and both those guys ended up leaving. And ever since then, Arkansas has not only not signed enough linebackers, aside from 2016, but they signed four of them, but only one of them ended up sticking around and, and, uh, and uh, Dijon Harris. But aside from that, they just, they just don't recruit enough linebackers and they ever, never have. So it's good to see linebackers. I mean, how many they get in this class? And some of them are outside. Some of them are outside and might project inside, but you've got uh, Kellen Burley, six foot 205. Levi Draper, uh, who's coming out of, uh, out of Oklahoma. Uh, who else? Eric Thomas, 6'3", 230. JT Tower, 6'4", 210. Ja'Cory Turner, 6'2", 205. I mean, they have some guys at the position now. Now, the one thing that's a little scary, you know, they got Colin Sutherland last night at tight end, but they need more bodies there. I think Pittman mentioned, you know, you'd like to have five of them. Obviously, that's, that's accurate, uh, but you've only got three now. So it makes sense that they want to go after a tight end in the graduate transfer market to, to go ahead and do that. Um, because that, I mean, even just, I mean, just thinking about this, like just getting through a practice, just getting through a practice with just three tight ends, that's, that's difficult to do. So need to beef that up. And, and Arkansas in this offense is going to use a lot of tight ends. They'll use one that'll be attached, a uh, traditional inline tight end. Uh, they'll use a sniffer, H-back type. So a lot of different roles for tight ends in this offense too, even though, you know, you might not think when you just think of a, of a spread. Uh, but there will be a, a, a role for, for tight ends in this offense. So, um, I mean, you got to be pleased overall. I mean, they, they, they ended up signing nine in the early period. And what, I guess 11 is what they ended up with. 12 counting, 11 high school, 12 with, uh, with Draper. Is that right? I think that's pretty close to right. So I got the uh, signing sheet here. You get these every year. It gives you a nice breakdown of everybody. I'm sure that'll be on the Arkansas website soon, but I don't want to go through everybody. I'm not obviously going to go through the guys that signed early, but we'll, we'll just look real quick at some of these guys who signed uh, in the late period. You had, we mentioned Marcus Henderson, we mentioned Levi Draper, Malik Cornsby we mentioned. Um, let's see, did Kari Johnson, Kari Johnson, Jaquela McGee, Miles Slusher signed early. Jalen St. John, we mentioned him. Jashad Stewart signed early. Colin Sutherland, we talked about him a little bit. Don't know a whole lot about Colin. I was at the basketball game last night uh, when all that went down. Speaking of that, basketball, man, that was a tough one. You know, I, I've heard so much, you know, we speaking about just interjecting on basketball real quick, but we've talked so much about, uh, you know, what they didn't do at the end of the game Saturday or Tuesday. We talked about what they didn't do at the end of the game and what they could have done better. They were up 11 with about just under eight minutes left and that lead totally slipped away, went into overtime. The first, the, the fact that they were in that game in the first place, I think is bordering on remarkable. I mean, again, this is a team that most people predicted to win 16 games like all season or at a ceiling really. And they've well gone beyond that. So. Yes, we can complain about the referees. There were some very questionable calls, but you got to shoot better than 60%. You got to have some uh, from the free throw line, I should say. You got to shoot better than 60%. You got to have more production from Jimmy Witt. And all around, I mean, Mason Jones can't score 40 points for you every single time out. Um, and I think that's three games in a row he scored at least 30. So that's, that's pretty impressive for, for Mason, but. You just, you, there are just certain things you're gonna have to do better. You can't, you can't get out rebounded that much. I mean, the, the turnovers obviously was, you know, a benefit for Arkansas, but there's just so many things that, I, I just have to say that I, I agree with Musselman in his post game that he was proud of his players now. They just didn't finish. What I wanted them to see, what I wanted to see was Arkansas to attack the final eight minutes like they were the team that was down. I think it was 59, 52 with about eight minutes left. I wanted to see Arkansas attack that time like they were down. Now, that doesn't mean just like rushing to get a shot and stuff. Obviously, you got to take care of that kind of stuff, but there's a little bit too much settling for threes and, and things like that. And, you know, get to the line, take it to the basket, but you got to have, you got to have some other guys step up besides, uh, besides just Mason Jones. 
not that not that the other players didn't do some good things, but you got to have more offense. Um, let's see. We mentioned Eric Thomas, linebacker, 6'3", 230 out of Pensacola. JT Towers had 170 tackles last year for Joe T. Robinson. Blaine Toll, who will probably play on the defensive line out of Hayes in Arkansas. Uh, Darren Turner, who is listed as a wide receiver. I would really like to see Darren Turner on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, he's a good looking athlete. I think they're okay at wide receiver. I mean, it could depend on the TQ Jackson situation. If TQ comes back, you know, who knows? Uh, Ja'Cory Turner, linebacker out of Atlanta. Nick Turner. I mean, it, here's what's cool too. If you go back and look at, I wrote a story after the early signing period, after the early national signing day, and broke down Arkansas's needs. This is what they have to accomplish in this class. And they literally just nailed it. Aside from tight end, I mean, they hit everything that I said that they needed to hit. I mean, getting a quarterback, you know, adding, well, they didn't land Ebony Jack. So I should say, aside from getting another running back, because Ebony Jackson's committed and probably signed later, and tied in. Everything else I think they nailed. Nick Turner, you know, just talking about safety as a need position. This is a guy that's got some really, really good speed. 5'11", 180 pounder. I mean, that guy's really fast. And then Cottrell Wallace also, who's uh, listed as a defensive line, outside linebacker tie. I guess if they got him listed as a defensive line, that makes him a defensive end. So at 6'5", 210 pounds. So um, it's a dead period. Usually, February, we'd be jumping right into junior days. They, were, they did squeeze one in last weekend during their last official visit weekend. But right now, it's a dead period until February 29th. And in the past, this has been a big time for junior days. It doesn't mean recruiting has stopped. And in fact, I don't think it will because there's still phone calls, electronic communication, all that stuff still happens. I mean, just because it's a dead period doesn't mean offers don't get extended and things like that. So there's still plenty of stuff like that to go on uh, with these juniors. and. Pittman has made it very clear, and what I loved about it was he didn't shy away from like recruiting rankings and things like that, and understands that you know the elite schools are recruiting, <laughs> you know, elite prospects, and they're ranked very highly for a reason. You know, Brett Bielema always used to kind of slam the rankings on National Signing Day, and a lot of coaches do that, you know, especially when they're not very highly ranked. Pittman says, you know, we love the class, but we want to do a lot better. We want to do better. This is Arkansas. We want to be recruiting up with the elite pros uh, programs in the country. And based on what we've seen so far with some of the recruits they've been able to bring in, I mean, Malik Henry is a huge get. You know, what they did on the offensive line, it'll be interesting to see what they do with a full year recruiting and see where we are with this 2021 class. I bet, if I had to bet right now, and we can throw this video back next year this time, I'm gonna, I, I, we're gonna see, I think, a top 25 recruiting class. We'll see if they get up, you know, into that elite, to me, when you're talking about the elite territory, you're talking about, you know, top 15. You know, if you get a top 15 class, that's something that people stand up and take notice. I think Arkansas was one of the winners when you consider the pool of players that they had to work with. 20% of the players that signed Division I sign in the late period now, so everything's kind of totally changed. When you consider the pool of players, the time that they had to do it to get these players like they did, you know, the guys that they signed early, the nine that they signed early, getting these graduate transfers. I mean, and then, you know, the three guys that they had commitments from today, I mean, that's what you want in terms of a splash. There were some, you know, obviously you'd like to get Alan Horace and Savion Williams, but I mean, you knew going in that you probably weren't gonna get them if you were on the razor's edge anyway, on hogsports.com, you knew that those, those guys weren't happening. Um, but to get Marcus Henderson, Malik Hornsby, Jalen St. John, Pretty, pretty solid finish to National Signing Day. All right, everybody, that should be a wrap. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna close the door on anything else happening between now and the rest of the evening, but I would expect uh, that's, that's it for the signings in the class of 2020. Um, you know, there might be some stuff later. They have until April 1st, I think, is what Sam Pittman said. So I'm gonna wrap it up. We went a real, little long, long. This might be the longest walk and talk we've ever done, just walking back and forth in Barnhill Arena. So I wanna thank everybody for joining us. I wanna thank everybody who has signed up with Hog Sports over the last, well, however long we've been, 20 months or so. It's been just a huge success and 24 seven has been great. Y'all have been great. Thank you so much for believing in us, sticking with us for your Razorback coverage. We'll be back with you guys again Thursday Tomorrow, we get to talk to all the assistant coaches, so all 10 assistant coaches will be made available to us 
uh, right before a basketball press conference. So um, be looking for a lot of content out of that as well. All right, everybody, appreciate you joining me. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, wrapping up National Signing Day 2020 for the Arkansas Razorbacks, and we'll catch you next time.